prop manipulation device, and today I'm messing around with it and pushing it to its limits. Doing everything from animations to making elevators to hunting gnomes. This device is so cool, and I can't believe we actually have it. Let's jump into it. All right, first we need to do some experiments with this thing. So I'm going to set down a trigger right here, and when I stand on this trigger, I'm going to have it activate my prop manipulation device. I'm going to have to activate this silver box right here. Okay, that should work. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there's currently no box here. What happens when I stand on this? Let's go. Boom. Okay, I am stuck in the middle of the prop. It doesn't like push me up. What happens if I'm like just taller than the prop like this? I'm going to move my prop down here. Let's try again. Okay, so we're going to stand on it. Okay, it pushed me up. Oh, so now we can build like a little elevator even. kind of want to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a sequencer here and I'm going to create a little elevator that's a little bit smaller than the one I had previously. So maybe it looks a little bit smoother. I'm going to have my little tiny manipulation device right here. That's activated on channel one. And then I'm just going to have a whole bunch of channels here. And I'm just going to like raise myself up a little bit at a time using these like sequential triggers. Okay, I've got 10 triggers set up. And now I just need to like copy and paste these two things here and then just have them raise up a little bit. And hopefully I raise up with it. Okay, let's give this a try. Here we go. We're going to interact. Boom. Okay, here comes the elevator. Okay, it's moving me up. Oh my gosh, it's working. It's a little slow. Maybe I should speed it up some, but it totally worked. I got to the top of that on my prop manipulated elevator. Well, the question is, how fast can we make it? That was really slow. I'm going to like make it go way faster. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I was a little choppy, but it worked. What happens if I go really fast on this? I'm going to speed this up a lot. All right, here we go. Super fast elevator. Boom. Whoa. <laughs> wow, that worked. Okay, but what happens if I do that opposite? Like, what if it squishes me? Like, get stuck in it? Will it really, like, push me out? I'm just going to flip this and we're going to find out. Hey, what the heck? Some of these aren't disappearing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys, I can walk straight through this. Wait, what in the world? I can walk straight through them. Why is that possible? What the heck? Okay, there's some weird glitches going on right now. There's no reason those should be appearing, guys. I think it's just a little glitch. Yeah, because look, I flipped it back over and now it's working. Why would that be a thing? That is so confusing. So don't flip your prop manipulation device upside down. There's some weird glitches there. All right, let's see what happens here. So we're gonna push this. Boom. Oh, okay, yeah, you definitely get stuck in it. It doesn't like smush you. The cool thing about this though is that it pushes you up and it could probably push you side to side. Very interesting. Right now, I want to try something just a little bit more practical. I want to do like an opening and door closing kind of thing. So here we have the Coliseum. I'm going to have them run in and I want these doors to open up for me. Because normally these are stationary props that you can't open or close or anything. But with the manipulation device, we can change that. So because there are multiple things here, I'm going to change this to a zone device, which makes this box here. I need to make this a little bit more skinny. So it's only going to touch the doors here. All right, I think that's going to work. And I'm I'm just gonna show the prop I'm receiving from one channel and hide it from another. Then I'm gonna place the new prop so that they're like uh, tilted open, right? Like that. Okay, cool. Then I'm just gonna grab this same device here, make sure it's touching both of these doors. And then for the settings on these, I'm just gonna switch these two channels. So basically, this is gonna be open, that's gonna be closed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One thing I gotta make sure is to have this hidden as true on these two because I want them to look closed at first. Okay, theoretically, this should work, right? The gates are closed. This is the open button. That's the close. Let's uh, try it. So we open. Boom. Look, it's open. Now a previously unopenable door is now openable, uh, but we need to close it. Here we go. Boom. Oh, dude, that's so freaking cool. Oh, this is so awesome, man. Just so many possibilities literally opening up to us. Okay, something else I want to test is the idea right here that when you damage a prop, it transmits on a channel. So I'm going to grab my little friend, the gnome here, and I'm going to attach one of these devices to him. And when it's damaged, I'm going to have it transmit on channel 11. Then I'm going to hide the prop on the same channel. So if you shoot it, it's going to disappear. But then I'm going to have another prop. It's going to appear on that same channel. And then it's going to disappear when it's damaged on channel 12. So I could keep doing this and make like three or four of these like uh, appearing and disappearing gnomes. And I'm just going to make a little like gnomish environment here. Little gnome shooting gallery as it were. I'm going to make sure I have environment and structure damage off so that I can't like uh, damage these guys. So you can see right now with the damage off, I can hit this tree and it's not damaged. Damage. But when I come up and shoot this gnome here, he disappears. Whoa! And look, that one appeared right there. Whoa! Oh no, look, there's another one. Whoa, okay, we're damaging them and they're disappearing and appearing. That's so cool. I feel like this just opens up a lot of possibilities for boss fights. Just other really cool levels and puzzles. All right, now I want
want to see if I can do some sort of animation with this. I'm thinking the robot could be a lot of fun. I've always felt like the robot's the ultimate prop. Actually, I think I want him to face this way. Let's delete him real fast. We're going to have him face this way like that. There we go. Then I'm going to get the rock right here. We're going to have him stand right in front of him. Perfect. They're about the same height. Okay, this could be hard, guys. I think what I want to do is I'm going to have his right leg kick the rock. Uh, you, you know, somewhere down low. This could be really hard, guys. Get our device. And I don't know how this is going to work, actually. I'm having second thoughts. Okay, you got to make sure I turn this to the zone. We're going to need it to be pretty tall. So that's about right. That's his whole leg. And maybe a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. Uh... Okay, how am I supposed to get this to work? What I'm worried about here is like the overlapping. Like, I don't really understand how it should work. Because if they're overlapping, how are they going to know which ones to show? Okay, wait, wait, guys. I think I figured this out. What I want to do, I want to do here is have something that's long and skinny and is touching every piece. I'm going to delete any extra pieces like this that are just kind of hanging off. I got to make sure it's touching every piece on this, including this like foot piece. And that it's not touching my next leg at all. Okay, I think I got everything. And then I'm going to make another one one that's just touching this piece. Now I can angle it a little bit. So it's just touching all of the props that are on the next leg. Oh, see, but it's touching that prop. Make this one just a little bit shorter. Try to make sure it's not touching this one at all. Okay, I don't think it's touching anything, but it's got all of the props in the leg. Okay, let's see if this works. This should work. Okay, all right, good. The second leg is not there. That's a good start. And the first leg is there. So when I step on this, that should disappear. Let's do that. Okay, there. Oh my gosh, it worked. Except for his body disappeared. Oh no. Okay, so it's kind of working. But unfortunately, it's touching this middle piece. So I got to just reposition it a little bit. I just got to bring it out away from the body. I think that should work. Let's try again. All right, here we go. Here we go. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it just comes down to like animating this. And I'm going to do this really simply. And the robot is actually kind of like a perfect piece for this. Because the parts are so big, I can kind of avoid overlapping. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is so juvenile, guys. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, boom. And then boom. Oh, my gosh. It's working. It's working. You guys, I had to make a little bit of adjustments to make that work. I had to make this one really thin because it was touching this leg a little bit. So I made it just thin enough to be only touching that leg. I'm probably gonna have to do that with this one too. But uh, just give me a minute to really like figure this out. Okay, so here's what I've done, guys. It's taken me a little while to like piece this all together, but uh, the robot here is gonna kick uh, the foundation and the foundation. And then each of these prop manipulation devices are just touching the foot of the statue as he gets rocketed out. Let's see if this works. Okay, the epic showdown of the ages, the IO versus the foundation. Who's gonna win? Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh! oh, I can't really reset it, but I can kind of reset it a little bit. <laughs> Why is creative so fun? Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta see that for full effect one more time. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> uh, the things we make in this game mode, the things we make.